Ladies and gentlemen, here we go with our next bout of the evening. This bout is scheduled for four three-minute rounds. And when the bell rings, our referee in charge, Tommy Kibbins. And now, let's meet our boxers. Introducing first, boxing out of the blue corner. Standing five feet nine inches tall, he went in at 152 pounds. A veteran of four matches. Representing Bryce Shelley Long Fist Institute and fighting out of Austin, Texas. Please welcome Lurich. Lurich Beautiful. And a hit opponent, boxing out of the red corner. Standing five feet ten inches tall. He weighed in 152 pounds. Tonight, he brings to the ring a record of one win and no defeat. Representing Roy Jones Jr. Boxing and Huddersfield Town Football Club, fighting out of Huddersfield, England, please welcome Fizz the Terrier Batista. Referee Tommy Kimmins getting the assignment of our first bout of the evening boxing to kick off Island Fights 48. TJ DeSantis, Nate Campbell inside the Pensacola Bay Center tonight for hybrid combat sports. Again, boxing and mixed martial arts action. Lawrence Purifoy takes on Fez Batista. This should be a colorful fight. I like Fez's outfit. It's actually a rematch, one that took place back in March of 2015. And uh, this is Batista's second fight of his career. Took a long time off and said that he wants to change the world. And, and his current vehicle in doing that is uh, by boxing and trying to inspire the youth of the nation. Wow. Before he comes forward, Batista answered with uh, two jabs there. Pure, pure, pure force throwing a, throwing a, a wild right hand at him. Good job, good job. Batista has taken three plus years off. I mean, a, a fighter can change so much in that time. I, I can't really even say that uh, either man can take much knowledge from that first meeting and you use it here tonight, maybe. Well, you know, um, I think it was an amateur fight, right? Uh, actually, uh, I, I believe uh, it's the. It was a pro fight. It was the only pro fight of Batista's career. Oh, wow. That's strange. He went through some uh, changes in life, actually uh, struggled with some mental health issues. and uh, so We all do that. Fighters all do that. Batista actually forged a relationship with Lady Gaga because uh, he, he was actually very close to killing himself. And Lady Gaga's songs and music uh, inspired him, and uh, they actually connected through that. Wow. Wow. Hey. Life is funny. Life is funny. I think he's waiting a little bit too much for pure pure for it, but but he, if he wants to get this thing over with, all he has to do is establish a jab. The first man to establish a jab will, will win this fight. This combination of punches there, pure for a game, though, still trying to stay light on his feet. Get moving. He's trying to lull him in with all this, all, all this, all this funny stuff. See the hand speed there on display of Batista. Pure for is very awkward, very awkward. Nothing he does is conventional. I don't think he breathes conventional. And if you're Batista, it's, it's hard to sort of anticipate where that target's going to be when Pure Foy you know, doesn't stand in front of you like a traditional boxer. But guess what? There's one thing that does not move, hit him in the chest. If, if Batista starts to hit him in the chest, Pure Foy will be doing all this stuff. He hit him in the chest. He's hitting him in the chest. See Batista throwing punches in combinations where Pure Foy is only really throwing one or two at a time. Well, you know what it is. The guy throws one punch at a time is looking for the big shot in the, in the show. And I don't think Pure, Pure Foy really had a game plan for this. He just came out and decided whatever happened the first time is going to happen this time. I want to change it with one punch. Two punch combination there from Pure Foy, but both blocked by the Terrier. Oh, nice over here right, leads. But back straight up and got hit with a, hit with a whole bunch of nothing. 
First round in the books. Batista, the cleaner boxer of the two men, who set the tone. Yes, he did. But what has to happen is Batista has to push the envelope a little more, make sure he touches this kid, shoulders, chest, any way he can touch him in the legal zone before he throws that right hand over the top. If he's going to throw that right hand over the top, set it up. You mentioned that in round number one with Purefoy being a bit of an unorthodox uh, type of boxer. If Batista is able to touch him, it, it really should change the posture and the movement of Purefoy. What I was, what I was good for was flicking my jab all over the place. Walk us through some of this action here, Nick. See that, that, that was losing left hand, but he should have aimed his right hand right at his chest. The chest is open to be hit. You don't have to argue with him, deal with all that incendiary movement. It's, it's, it's crazy, the stuff he's doing. Hit him in the chest. Seconds out, round number two, ready to go. It is Lawrence Purefoy and Fez Batista. Fez Batista, sorry. Fez is a nice kid. Fighting out of England, training here with Roy Jones Jr. in Pensacola. He's starting to settle down this round, I think. There's counter right hand there. Missed uh, with the shot, but he hit him in the chest with a nice jab early. Corner of Batista telling him not to wait. Don't wait on Purifoy. Purifoy is changing from right to left and back. He's fighting square. He's ducking down and doing all this stuff from time to time. Waving his head at him with his hands down, but I think that Batista hit him with a, a nice shot, nice and left hook counter. All Fez Batista has to do is touch him to the chest. He's barely missing with that right hand, though. Purefoy is barely missing with that right hand. Purefoy really selling out on the punch as well, and they almost turning his body uh, 90 degrees when he uh, misses it. He's got to be careful and stay compact with those punches now. Uh, but he's landed a few of them. I mean, Batista's waiting for one shot, waiting, waiting for that perfect shot to set up. If he keeps punching the combinations, he can catch this kid. Hard right hand to the body. Nice combination there by Purefoy. Oh, nice Batista right hand forward. by Batista, yeah. Purefoy's throwing so many wide shots. He's picking, he's getting most of them picked off with the arms, but he is throwing. He's throwing more now. Oh, nice combination. Both guys a little wild. Second round action here, Fez Batista. Nice lead right hand for Fez Batista. Purefoy definitely came to fight. Fez Batista's doing something that, that um, that um, Alfred Smith used to call the steal. He throws a lead right hand with, without a jab. They call it stealing. He's stealing from this kid now. He's landing three of them in a row. Pure boy coming forward. Nice. Eats more shots there by Batista. Credit to Pierre Foy still coming forward, not rattled by the offense that Batista's landing. Oh, well, that, that one rattled. Right. Right. He didn't rattle him, but he did take it. Nice count, 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 jack, count, jack. Nice combination. Pure boy. Batista's waving him in and telling him to come on. My kind of fighter. You think Batista's a little bit surprised that Purefoy was able to eat that big uh, shot and still come forward? No. You don't get surprised by that. Oh, nice, nice wind up. <laughs> and miss by Purefoy. Right hand by Batista. Purefoy is so awkward. Oh, nice move. Beautiful. Batista landing now trying to hit with that left hand there, but Oh, nice right hand. Right finds a home. Oh, oh, missed with two out of three shots, but he landed one nice one. Nice body shot. Um, Batista's ducking his head, not looking at his target. Move left and right there. The bell sounds. Two rounds in the books. These kind of fights test men's will but also test their conditioning because when you miss with a shot, it takes a lot out of you. Especially when you're throwing like Purefoy is. I mean, Balls. he's turning, you know, full 90 degrees on the shots that he's landing and missing. And that's when it really takes a lot out of you. When you miss with a shot, it really takes a lot out of you. Two rounds in the books, Nate. Uh, we'll see some of the action here walks through. Purefoy threw all those shots. I don't think he landed one. He's not committing to him when he's coming forward. But when he throws the one big shot, he really sells out for that one shot. That yeah, one shot is designed to do all the things that those combinations should have done. 
for the strategy of throwing that you know, one big shot and, and selling out on it. You gotta wonder if it's a wise strategy. He has the power for that now, but if he doesn't land that shot, it's gonna, like you said, drain him. Exactly. Exactly. I was what I would what I would always do when I was fighting the guy. I would touch him with so many jabs and other things, so many feints to make him make make movements, and that would line him up for the shots I wanted. And even if I wasn't punching, I was fainting. The guy that the, the guy that learns that, um, that works on that works his jab and gives a couple feints, he can win. They can win this fight by knockout. Third round underway. Lawrence Purifoy, Fez Batista, Batista with the Union Jack in his shorts. Mentioned how he wants to really be a role model and change the world, and he's doing that through the vehicle of boxing. Took a few years off, now he's back, and uh, back in the ring with the same man uh, he last fought in his one and only profile. You know, when I, when, when I heard you make that statement, oh, nice, nice hook. If he turns the body and stops throwing the arm, that hook can count for something. Batista's being, being, letting himself be caught off guard. And he's reaching with the right hand. But the vehicle of boxing can change people's lives because a lot of people see us in the ring and they hear our, hear our stories. But in the process of hearing our stories, oh, nice jab, nice combination. Fez Batista's doing a pretty decent job this round of trying to walk him around and touch him. A nice right hand by Purifoy. Purifoy caught him with a nice shot. You see Batista's posture changing a little bit, getting uh, a little unorthodox himself. Yeah, he's, but, he, but it's like he's trying to sell into it. Oh, Ooh, beautiful right hand. Combination left hook right hand. Both guys landed a good shot. These boxers are very even. Ooh, nice right hand lead by, by, by um, Batista. Touch under 90 seconds remaining here in round number three. Straight jab there by Purifoy. I think that Batista's looking, oh, Batista's looking for the hook so much, he's, he's missing out on the jab. Good jab, good jab, so the jab is there. He makes it up, started with the body, went to the head, now Purifoy's waving him on. We've got ourselves a fight. Yes, we do. Barn, barn burn almost. Purifoy coming forward, Batista backing up, covering him. Now, 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 now Batista's starting to sell out when he throws his right hand. Rather than set it up with a jab, he's throwing just this one big right hand. And he's landing some good shots outside of the right hand. We've seen Purifoy switch stances right a few times, going from southpaw to orthodox. He's a hard right hand there, though, standing orthodox. Less than 30 seconds remaining round number three. He is truly a sucker for the right hand. Because I don't think Purifoy has missed um, um, Batista's missed Purifoy more than three right hands this round. He finally missed one. Final seconds of round number three, Fez Batista. Lauren Purifoy, Purifoy coming forward with some big strikes. Hard right hand! Action all the way to the end bell there in round number three. Big shot landed by Purifoy. He's got to feel proud about that uh, last sequence there as he goes back to his corner to take a seat. Yeah, he should, but he, but he, no offense, he really took the most shots that round. He did, he did. See, my thing is, we, these guys don't understand that a subjective judge would look at these fights like here. They're posted. See, he hit him with a two, piece, two, two out of three shots, but then he stopped. And that's really one of only two combinations that he threw like that. And the thing about it is, you, in order to be a a world-class fight and go to the next level, you gotta put shots together because one's not gonna get it done. Right, and what we saw there, the replay, I mean, it was nice offense by Purefoy, but it was a, a small sample size yeah. of what we saw yeah. over the course of the round. Yeah, basically, only through two, 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 then the guy, then look, at, look at these, these double and triple jabs. These jabs pile up points. Right. Because they look, no offense, you can see a jab a lot of times when you can't see a right hand land. And a lot of people don't get that. Judges do reward the jab, they will reward, uh, you know, effective boxing. And, you know, sometimes uh, you, you get that big dramatic strike, but you, it's one dramatic strike to, you know, 10 or 15 smaller shots from the other man that, that right. add up. I see guys get caught with caught with one shot, get knocked out, but the ones that are really the, the, really the coolest are when you hit a guy, what we call the blend. Hit him off the blend, brrr, catch him with a shot on the end of it. 
And we see a lot of uh, strikes there by Purifoy, but it was the jab of Batista that landed solid twice. Yeah, and, and pushed his head back. And he landed a right hand in that combination. Another right hand lead. A pure, a pure, another right hand lead, another hook. Right. All, all, by, all by Batista. And a lot of volume from Purifoy. Now he's starting to get light on his feet. Dancing, oh, oh. teasing shots here. Purifoy's going for it, but Batista's landing the strikes. Purifoy, oh, nice right hand lead, nice hook. Purifoy looks like he's trying to sucker Batista into kind of a street fight here. That's okay. If, if I'm landing at this rate, I'll keep fighting in the street. Two minutes remain in this match. Final round here, Fez Batista. You think you're catching or something. Batista's not looking at what he's punching at this point. He's just throwing shots a lot of times. He, gotta keep, he has to keep his eyes on his opponent. But he's, but he's throwing enough combinations to catch, catch pure forward with some shots. There it is again. There it is. There it is. He took one shot out of the four he landed. Another hook. left hand there by Batista. Purefoy trying to fire back, but not finding a home for really anything. Nice jab to the body. That's the 90 seconds remain in this fight. Batista. Oh, nice, nice body work. Hand. Nice body work. Now on the inside, Purefoy needs to cover up a oh. move. Oh, nice body shot. Oh, nice body shot. Batista landing at will. Oh, nice shot. Left in the right hand. How tough is Purefoy still walking forward? Needs to do more, though, than walk through this punishment from Batista. I think the shot is over for a second there. He's trying, both guys are trying to get the brush. Hands way below the belt for both men here. 45 seconds left. Four, four. Both guys are trying to catch their breath at this point. Oh, oh. Batista comes in. Now put it into the corner, the clinch. Nice right hand lead. Tommy Kimmins separates him. 30 seconds left in this contest. What a fight this has been. Fez Batista, Lawrence Purefoy, Pensacola Bay Center here. Now the fight's 48. Nice combination. Tommy's telling him to pick him up, but Purefoy's pants up to his navel plate. An interesting uh, fashion statement, I guess you would call it for Purefoy. Nine seconds of this fight. Oh, he... That was a barn burner. That was a fight. That yeah. was a fight that sets the tone for yeah. the other fighters in the back. Oh, yeah. I think that like, Batista, Batista needed this. He needed this time, this kind of fight, to get his feet under him. Maybe he'll settle out next time. He'll be more definitive about his punches. Boy, we're talking about Batista has been away for, you know, over three years. And uh, you know, there are a lot of changes uh, in and outside of the ring. And uh, you know, for him to you know, come back and have this performance, I think it's a yeah, step in the right nice, direction. Yeah, it was. It was. Sometimes the rounds are needed much more than a knockout. Nice combinations when he throws them, but he doesn't look at his point. If he, see, he, then he's, he's winging because he's not looking. Right. I mean, if, if Purifoy is touching really anything with those shots, it's the arms, it's the gloves. Right. But, but, but Purifoy is game. You right. can't take that from his game. He, he, he pushed the effort, well, he pushed the effort, but he, he was getting hit a lot. Right. Nice combinations. And I think Purefoy would go another round. He might not have gas to go another right. round, but he'd go another round. I guarantee you, yeah, I guarantee you this, he'd, he'd try to find it. Right, absolutely. You can't, you can't blame a man for that. Yeah, kid's a fighter for sure. That final action was just, was just good stuff. I like the mixing up of the offense here from Batista as well, going to the body, going to the head. Never really getting predictable with his shots. But you know, the thing about it is when you're dealing with a guy that's just unorthodox, the best thing you can implement is a steady jab. Right. A steady jab stops all that, that awkwardness. I was an awkward fighter, but I, I had a class, I was classically trained to box. Right. I just had an awkward time. Right. This guy has, has no style. It's impossible to fight a guy with no style. And you can use that awkward style to throw the rhythm of your opponent off. There's a running joke the guys talk about who held mitts for me. Or will box me. Say, Nate doesn't punch one, two, three. He punches six, 11, 47. <laughs> <laughs> he don't punch right. You know, Sean Ben Mitchell once said I had a, a bow-legged right hand. 
I threw a, this funky little curving right hand. Uh, but you got to find a way to make it work. Sure. All right, judges have rendered their decision. It lies with Christopher James, and we will get that momentarily. All right, the decision is in. Let's make it official with Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, first, how about a round of applause for these men inside the ring? What a way to start the show. After four rounds of action, we go to our judges for a decision. Judge Rodolfo Aguiar scores about 39, 37, Batista. Judge Rick Bay scores about 39, 37, Purify. And Judge Michelle Olney scores about 39, 37, for your winner by split decision. Fast, the Terrier Batista! Fez Batista getting a split decision, picking up right where he left off his career three years ago by earning a decision over Lawrence Purifoy. Decision I think uh, he's going to find a lot of uh, solid things to work on and walk away with from this fight. Uh, a good reintroduction for uh, him in the boxing world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you... <laughs> Sometimes you have to have that old school rap situation. Let me clear my throat. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with a little bit of DJ Cool here, my hey, friend. Sometimes you got to clear your throat. The Terrier, Fez Batista, styling and profiling in the ring, and he gets it done tonight. Split decision. He will take it back home to England. More action headed your way. You're watching Island Fights 48.